A lot of talk recently about artificial intelligence program called ChatGPT. And if you're still not sure what it is, it's a site where you can ask questions. And we decided to let the bot describe <laughs> itself. So here's what it said. I am an AI language trained on a large corpus of data to generate human-like responses to a wide range of questions and prompts. And then it went on to type out, I exist solely to assist users in generating human-like text. A large corpus of data <laughs> certainly sounds human to us. Well, Denver 7's Christian Lopez dives into the debate over AI in the classroom. It's a phenomenal example of how a electronic brain can do things. Sean Schaefer with MSU Denver is talking about ChatGPT, a new artificial intelligence bot growing in popularity. I think one of the things that I can't emphasize enough is the speed at which it's happening. So what can it do? ChatGPT is an AI program that allows you to create uh, any sort of work. It's a tool that can essentially write anything for you with a simple prompt. A really good example of using an artificial intelligence brain uh, to do certain creative works. Now schools across the country, including Colorado, are trying to figure out what boundaries to set in classrooms. We're not reacting to it the way some other institutions reacted where it's like, okay, we're just going to ban. You can't look at this, pretend it doesn't exist. It's like, yeah, well, we can't pretend it doesn't exist because it's out there. We teach students that we expect them to deliver their work and you know the way our plagiarism rules are written chat gpt would be violating those schaefer says they're still trying to figure that out so we decided to ask chat gpt to write a policy for itself so it generated this policy for using chat gpt in the classroom it has a list of eight different things showing the appropriate use in the classroom for educational purposes, answering factual questions, generating creative writing prompts. It also lists that there is a teacher responsibility to make sure that students are using this appropriately. There are some folks that have embraced, you know, the, the things that you can do with it and they are exploring that. But I think a lot of people are like you. Uh, they, they're waking up to it now and going, oh, that can do that. Uh, now knowing that, how do I need to adjust or change my assignments? MSU Denver will be having a meeting soon to talk about how to navigate the new technology. We're going to wind up doing, uh, later in February, uh, a campus-wide discussion on this very topic just to figure out how we need to modify our rules or how we need to deal with it. In Denver, Christian Lopez, Denver 7. And several school districts in large U.S. cities are banning chat GPT, including Los Angeles, New York, and Seattle. A little bit of insight into that. There was a poll conducted by Stanford University newspaper that found 17% of students admitted to using chat GPT for help with their final exam. Now, a law professor at the University of Minnesota says the AI program received a passing grade on one of his law exams. It's a passing grade at a really very good law school. Our students are really excellent, and it's a passing grade to very difficult questions. ChatGPT says they don't want their program used for misleading purposes in schools, and they are working on ways to mitigate that.